Good morning. morning. Welcome everyone to worship at Sardis Presbyterian Church. Our question for reflection in the bulletin this morning is, what do you trust to be true about God? One of the things that I trust to be true about God is that God always welcomes us just as we are. So I'm glad that you all are here and I hope that you feel that whether you are online or here in the sanctuary with us. If you would go ahead and find the Ritual of Friendship pad in your pews or sign the online connect card, we would love to know that you are worshiping with us. If you would pass that back and forth down your pew so that you can make sure you know those who are worshiping around you by name. We are in our summer schedule for faith formation and worship. Next weekend, it is 4th of July weekend, so that there, there is no Sunday school next weekend because of the holiday weekend. But so our combined faith formation um, time together will restart the Sunday after that. Um, next Sunday, you will find us for worship over in the Fellowship Hall. And if you forget that, the welcome flags will be out over there by the Fellowship Hall instead of over here. We promised you all that we would do that, and so we're going to keep doing that. And just as a friendly reminder, the location of our worship in the summer does not necessarily dictate the style of worship in which um, we will worship. Today, after worship, um, there will be an opportunity to be guided down to see the prayer garden that has been somewhat recently restored. Maybe you knew we had a prayer garden, maybe you didn't. And maybe it's a little too hot for you to walk down there, and that's okay too. But even if you'd just like to drive over to the edge of the South Lawn and then kind of make the shorter walk over that way, um, Bruce Scoggin, are you here? Yes, Bruce is going to lead anybody who wants to just see. Even if you don't want to stay down there, Bruce is going to help show you because it's been recently restored thanks to several of our MSG groups and our Earth Care team. Next Sunday, we invite folks to stay after worship if you are able to help us decorate and do some setup for VBS. So if you are volunteering, we invite you to stay, or even if you can't volunteer during the VBS week, we would love to have your extra hands to help decorate um, after worship. At this time, I would invite you all to stand, and in a moment, I'll invite you to greet your neighbors. Um, But first, let's turn around and wave to the camera. We're going to welcome our online worshipers who are with us this morning. And now if you would greet your neighbors, especially those you did not come in the car with. I don't hear this. Is this working? I don't think so. Good morning. Would everybody be seated, please? Again, good morning. My name is Kathy Templeman, and this is a minute for mission, by the way. I serve on the worship ministry team. I'd like to speak for a minute about the opportunity to be a part of our worship in a simple but meaningful way as a leader or liturgist. The word liturgy 
means the work of the people and work done on behalf of the people. These are the words that we say and pray together in worship. The call to worship, prayer of confession, and the prayer after the offering are some examples. It can be as simple as just reading words on a page or possibly coming up with your own prayer if you're so inspired. As you probably noticed this summer, we've had children, youth, and adults reading and additionally bringing up the elements at the start of the service. We invite anyone to be a leader in worship. This may be a little bit out of your comfort zone, but never fear. On August 18th, Joe B. will be offering lay leadership and lay leader um, training and guidance. Please attend if you'd like to learn more. And just please sign up and pick a date that you'd like to participate. Sign-ups are in the Sunday Bulletin. Um, <clears throat> If you're already thinking, I can do this, great. We need three volunteers to meet my lovely husband, Dave, who's standing back there, um, to help carry up the Bible and the worship elements. Can I see three hands? Say yes, 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 yes. You go, buddy. Okay, I'm seeing two. Go ahead. We got, we got another one up here? All good. Thank you. Now I invite you to stand in body and spirit and join me in our opening liturgy with the call to worship. In life and in death, we belong to God. Every age and stage of life, and trust, worship, and serve one to God. In worship and in daily life, the grace of Jesus Christ is with us. In worship and in daily life, the love of God speaks with us. In worship and in daily life, So we will be singing Great is Thy Faithfulness, and you can turn to number 39 in your hymnal, but also keep your bulletin beside you. Uh, the way this, is, this song is a little bit of different arrangement than what's in the hymn book, so we will sing verses 1 and 2 in the hymn book, and then this tag that is in, the, um, in your bulletin. And then three, we'll sing verse three, then the tag, and then at the end, we will sing um, the normal refrain or the more well-known refrain.
Please be seated. <clears throat> Jesus proclaimed the good news of God's kingdom through his words and actions. He showed God's mercy by blessing the children, healing the sick, caring for the brokenhearted, eating with outcasts, and forgiving sinners. Friends, let us confess our sins together and open ourselves up once again to the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God. You created the world good and made everyone equally in your image. You saved us by your grace and your steadfast love endures forever. We confess that we struggle to hold these truths of our faith in the midst of grief, struggle, and suffering. We have been quick to desire answers and resistant to wait and listen for your word. We doubt it is possible to live as one community rather than trying to do so. Holy cow. <laughs> we have exploited our neighbors and nature. We have become apathetic instead of praying without ceasing for our broken, broken world. God, forgive us. We know we deserve your condemnation, and yet you act with justice, mercy, to redeem us and all creation. May your everlasting love move us to trust, speak, and enact your love. Amen. Friends, believe the good news. <laughs> Good morning. Can I get all the kids up here with me? Hi. How are you? Good. Did you have a good week? Good. Okay, so we are going to talk about feelings. So um, tell me some different feelings or emotions that you feel. Mad, happy, sad, um, scared, confused. So do you think that God loves you when you're angry? Do you think God loves you when you're sad? 
What about when you're scared and you feel all alone and you feel like there's nobody there? Does God love you and he's still there with you? Yeah, that's right. So when we go through life, we go through all kinds of experiences where sometimes we feel really, really angry and we just feel like, ugh, but God's right there with us and he's telling us, I'm right here, I'm not going anywhere, right? So we are going to get to sing a little song that helps me remember that no matter what I'm feeling, no matter what I'm going through, God sent God's only son to die for us, right? So that we could be forgiven, so that we could be part of that family, right? <clears throat> so every time I sing this song, I just think about the fact that no matter what, like God showed that love that was just beyond anything else, beyond all the feelings and all the things, right? So you guys get to sing with me. Are you ready? I'm going to get down here so you can sing with me. Come on, come on. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. So the Bible tells us that Jesus loves us, right? The Bible tells us that God loves us, and God sending God's only son tells us that, right? So when we feel all those feelings, one thing that can help us when we're feeling angry, God loves me. When we're feeling sad, God loves me no matter what, okay? Thank you for singing with me. Friends, as we prepare to hear God's word to us this day, let us first go to God in prayer. Oh God, you are a God who is always willing to dig into the dirt or go to the farthest ends to reach us. So reach us now through your word. Let your spirit open our ears and our hearts to hear your word this day. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from Lamentations, from the third chapter, verses 19 through 33. Listen for God's word to you today. The thought of my affliction and my homelessness is wormwood and gall. My soul continually thinks of it and is bowed down within me. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in God. The Lord is good to those who wait for God, to the soul that seeks the Lord. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put one's mouth to the dust. There may yet be hope. To give one's cheek to the smiter and be filled with insults, for the Lord will not reject forever. Although the Lord causes grief, God will have compassion according to the abundance of God's steadfast love. For God does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. If we are honest, passages from Lamentations are probably not the most requested ones for preaching or teaching. And in fact, aside from a few of the verses that we find here in chapter 3, most of the other five chapters of Lamentations are pretty hard to stomach. The writer is thinking about all that they have lost, all of the affliction and the suffering, the hunger that they and their community are enduring. There is deep faith 
but there is deep sorrow and agony and feelings of isolation and separation from God. They are wrestling with, how could this be, this situation that we are in? Is God angry at us? Has God rejected us? We've tried to be faithful, and we know we're not perfect. You know, nobody is, but I just don't understand. How could this happen? The book of Lamentations is actually a book of poetry, I was reminded in the past few weeks. But in English, you don't really pick up on that. When you look at it in the original Hebrew, each chapter is an acrostic poem, and it starts with, Um, in sequential order, a different letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So it's not just someone's rambling complaints. It's intentional, thoughtful sentences put together. And it moves line by line from these moments of introspection. And then into chapter 3, it begins to address the community. The writer of Lamentations, we can presume, has seen their people exiled from their homeland. They've seen or heard their temple is destroyed. People are separated from family and friends. People have been widowed and orphaned. Food and water seem to be scarce. Well, no wonder they are full of lament. But in this community, space is made for the laments to be shared rather than to be bottled up. My soul continually thinks of it, and it is bowed down within me. Likely, I imagine you know that feeling, but you don't necessarily want to be reminded of it. What situation comes to mind when you think of a soul continuing to ruminate over the struggles or sufferings of life? Maybe you have experienced this yourself. Maybe you have sat with a friend or family member going through something hard. or Maybe you've noticed that other people in the world who are encountering suffering after suffering. If we are honest, lamentations might not be the word that we want to hear. But if we are honest, it might be the word we just need to hear. If you've ever felt all over the place, like you have all of the characters from the movie Inside Out inside of your head, touching all those different control panels for happy and excited and sad and angry and fearful and unsure, but also sure of something. If you've ever felt disappointed, but also grateful. If you've ever felt jaded, but also a little bit hopeful. If you've ever glimpsed silver linings or God's grace in the midst of hardships, then lamentations is the word you need to hear. And even if you haven't felt this way yet, it is still God's word for you as well. As we talk about laments and hard things, I would encourage us to to resist the tendency to compare one another's difficulties or to compare the severity or lack thereof of your trials to someone else's because that's not what it's about this is a word from god for all of god's people one that has the power to bring us together and to strengthen our connections to god in all of the moments of life not just the happy ones But you know, Lamentations doesn't give us all of the answers, or really many answers at all. It even gives us direct contradictions in a couple of the verses that I just read today. So which is it? Does God cause grief? Or does God never willingly afflict or grieve anyone? Which is it? I tried to go dig into the original Hebrew words and find you all some answers to that question But I am sorry to report that I had no such luck. That's pretty close to what it says. Maybe it's that that God feels far away sometimes when we're going through such a hard time, and that's what causes our grief to be magnified. I'm not really sure. But these type of experiences that we call to mind sometimes make us wonder, God, where are you? Why did this have to happen or have to happen this way? Did you cause this or allow this to happen, God? Or are you just as grieved as me? 
And so I say that Lamentations is the word from God we need to hear, not because it gives us all of the answers, but because it opens the door of communication between us and God and perhaps our community to be filled with all of our all-over-the-place feelings. And when that door is left open, even just a crack, there's enough space for light to break in. My thought of my affliction is homelessness, is, in my homelessness is wormwood and gall, says the writer. My soul continually thinks of it and is bowed down within me, but this I recall, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Through that door that was just left ajar, light slips in, and it gives the writer just enough hope to be able to proclaim the beliefs of their faith and to move from this warm wood and gall to great is your faithfulness, God. Seems they go back to this core memory of their faith that God is loving, that God will never leave us, that God will never choose to, in some circumstances, act towards us with love, and then in some other circumstances, choose to ignore us or act with vengeance. It is this core memory of their faith that gives them hope. This core memory and beliefs of their faith gives them a breath to breathe and just enough light on their path to take the next step and to see the hope in the midst of whatever's going on. This core memory of their faith reminds them that if they can pause and listen, there is a word from God for them. There is salvation and compassion from God that are maintained throughout and never dependent on our worldly sufferings. Our reflection question at the beginning of the bulletin this morning was, what do you trust to be true about God? Take just a moment to think about that. What do you believe to be true about God? Would anyone like to share a thought that comes to mind? God is always there. God is love. God is faithful. God is creator of all things. God is with us. Nothing can separate us from God's love. God's love even comes to seek us out. God calls us by name. The new banners we have in the sanctuary this morning that reference Micah 6, 8, remind us of some of the other core pieces of our faith that God calls us to follow in God's footsteps and acting justly and loving mercy and walking humbly with God. These are just some of the pieces of the good news in our faith of Jesus Christ. But you know, as one commentator put it that I read last week, the tension between our lived experience and then our normative faith is evident to anybody who is honest. We trust God is faithful. We believe that God is love. But then sometimes there are moments in life where it's just hard to fully believe it. Even when some, there is some kind of concrete evidence or science to explain the reasoning behind a disease or why a car accident might have occurred or why a weather pattern led a tornado or a hurricane to hit one area and not the other, it is still human nature to wonder, why? How could this be? It doesn't make sense that this would happen to any living thing in a world created by a loving and merciful God. And in times like these, we humans, we crave the answers. We want the certainty. We want someone to explain it for us and Sometimes this leads us to say cliche phrases that are often not very helpful and sometimes harmful. I can still remember what it was like to hear the song, Blessed Be Your Name, that we will sing after the sermon today. Back when I was 
just out of high school, I heard it at a funeral of a high school classmate of mine. They had died in a car accident along with several others, and the song powerfully reminds us that when we are in the wilderness, God is there. When we are in a place where streams of abundance flow, God is there. And if God is there, then some way, somehow, there is a praise that we can offer to God, even if it feels small. But I still remember when we got to this additional bra- bridge excuse me, in the, in the song that we will intentionally leave out today, how this phrase, you give and take away, just didn't sit right with me. God choosing to give or take away something seemed just completely opposite of a God whose steadfast love never ceases. The car accident didn't make sense, and neither did these contrasting theologies. Without giving us many answers, Lamentations models for us how we can still be open about our experiences of pain and grief and uncertainty while still trusting in what we believe to be true about God. The world would tell us that it's not possible for both to exist, to coexist, but God rests right in the middle of that tension. And like Amanda told the kids earlier, God says, I'm right here with you. Going back to those core memories of our faith, or maybe even to actual memories from your life, remind us of what is true about God. And those truths can be gifts of mercy on the journey when things get hard. These core memories of our faith, like God is love, they don't necessarily give us all the answers to our questions, but they do meet us where we are and say, remember who God is. Remember who you are, beloved children of God. If we are honest, that place of tension might not be the place that we would choose to sit. But if we are honest, it might be the very place that we find that steadfast love of God and compassion seeking us out to sit with us. Back when I was living in Atlanta and serving at a church there, we had a young person die from our church community, and the entire community was just shaken, including everybody at our church, and there were all kinds of questions circling around. We didn't have any answers for them. We didn't even have any educated guesses or good faith estimates to offer. And during what was, I'll be honest, a really horrible time of loss and grief, God was there. God was working through the community members and different religious leaders and the teenagers and adults who all came together to care for one another. And at the memorial service, we stood in front of the packed crowd and we proclaimed that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God. So often during this time, there were just no words to adequately express what anybody was feeling, but we proclaimed the core of our faith and the tension of real life. And it took a long time to journey through all of the intensity of that grief, and it's still a journey that continues today for many who were affected by that loss. In the fall, after that loss occurred, over 50 young people from the community we gathered together on the church lawn to plant daffodil bulbs into the dirt. We got our fingers dirty and we dug up holes and we planted hundreds and hundreds of bulbs deep into the ground. We covered them with dirt and then we waited. We waited and waited. We waited through those winter months and then just past the one-year anniversary of the loss in late February we started to see these green stems poking up from the ground that turned into these beautiful yellow blooms that covered the church lawn. They reminded us that God's presence that sometimes feels so unseeable was right there among us. And now even each year after year, those daffodils still grow up. And it's funny how Even when I was living there, I would forget about them for a little while. And then I would see those first blooms poke up at the beginning of spring, and they would remind us 
And now each year, now even that I live in Charlotte, each time when I see that first daffodil blooming in somebody else's yard as I'm taking my morning walk, I'm reminded of that core memory of my faith that is recalled. And this I recall, and therefore I have hope. Friends, to watch daffodils bloom is to be reminded of the earth from which we come and on which we stand and to which we will return one day. To watch daffodils bloom is to be reminded of the creator's hands that hold you, nurture you, protect you in every season of life. To watch daffodils bloom is to trust that even in the darkest months, even when you see no possibilities, love digs into the dirt to find you. To watch daffodils bloom is to patiently trust in the faith that we cannot see, but in the stories that we have heard and in the love that we are born to share. To watch daffodils bloom is to look around and to see proof that you are not alone to see the promise of new life all around us. We belong to God and to one another in life and in death on each day in between. And friends, so it is to watch the daffodils bloom. I pray that it may be so. Amen. I would invite you to stand in body or spirit. may be seated.
Friends, our lectionary text threw us quite the scripture verse, especially for a summer Sunday, given any Sunday. So this morning, for the prayers of the people, we're going to offer a little bit more space, and you'll have a choice as to how you would like to participate in this time of prayer. It's okay if one of us prefers to be still or silent. It's okay if one of us prefers to move or to light a candle or to sing. For some, one is more meaningful for them, and for others, something else is meaningful. So this morning, we'll lift up the prayers of God's people in a few different ways. You can use the prompts that are printed in the bulletin right under the prayers of the people. They will appear on the screen for those of you who are online. You can use those to aid you in praying from where you are. Or you can also come up to one of the four tables. There's two here and two here. You can come up to the front, um, lift up to God one of the sorrows or struggles that is on your heart and mind. You'll, you can light a candle. And then there are some different printed reminders of who God has promised to be for us that you can take with you. Um, and parents with kids, we have an alternate instruction for you to maybe help you engage with your kids um, in a way that might be more um, accessible to them. So friends, let us bring to God all of who we are, all of our joys and our sorrows, for God is with us in that all. Friends, let us pray together.
Friends, let us pray. Oh God, we praise you for being the God who you are, whose mercies are new every morning, whose steadfast love never ends and seeks us out wherever we are. God, may we feel that we are each resting in your presence this day, whether we carry joys or sorrows or confusion or excitement. God, may we feel you with us in it all. God, help us to keep that door cracked open so that your light will break in and remind us of your hopes, even when we might not have the words or assurance to say it yet for ourselves. And God, we give you thanks for our church community and all of our friends and family who support us and uplift us and who remind us that we are not alone. May we be the people of God that you have called us to be, who support and listen and care for one another and sit with each other even when there are no words. God, bring us peace. Bring us your mercy. Help us to see that it is fresh for us each day that we are given. And hear us now, God, as we pray for your kingdom to come here on earth. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, let us respond to God with gratitude for all that God is and continues to be by giving of our tithes and our offerings. You would stand and by your spirit. And we're going to sing um, the song that I just sang together. Sing, stand, please. I count on one thing the same God that never fails will not fail.
Dear God, although these offerings are a small fraction of all the things you give us, please accept these gifts we bring today. Thank you for your everlasting love and forgiveness. In your son's name we pray, amen. If you would join me in hymn number 838, Standing on the Promises. Friends, as you go from this place, know that God is already with you, but God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, goes with you each and every day. And now may the peace of Christ be with you. Go in peace.